All right, so the control rods go bend in or bend out. Straight out, bend in. Okay, so there's tubes in here. See this sticky stiff? Sticky stiff, sticky stiff. You gotta get that sticky stuff off. If you can't get the sticky stuff off, uh, Kicker works really good for this. Don't ask me why, it just does. You don't want sticky stuff on your control rods. It will undermine your ability to get free movement. And you'll wish you got it off of there once it's down the, the chute. So take the extra couple seconds and clean it now. You'll thank me later. Because mine had tape holding it together. So I'm mm -hmm. just getting that tape residue. That tape residue is not that big a deal. Uh, you probably wouldn't have to clean it. But I have had some that are glued in solid. Thinking of Dynam planes right now. Mm, yeah. All right. So speaking of Dynam planes, we work with BitGo Hobby. They're one of our, you know, our partner companies that we work with. They're one of our affiliates. And um, we did Dynam planes for them. And they have been extremely supportive of us. Oh, wait. Where are we coming out? Oh, there it is. Let's show the people right here. So, you know, speaking of working with good vendors, they have been great to work with because we have had some not so pleasant things to say about Dynam. And uh, they have backed us up on pretty much everything, which is unheard of. So we just wanted to remind you guys, when we work with companies, we work with companies that let us be honest to you uh, as viewers. And it, it's not always to their advantage. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. They want to sell these planes. Okay. We want to bring truth to you and uh, help you guys make good decisions on purchases and things like that. And then also, of course, we want to enjoy this process too. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, the value that we should be bringing includes the truth of whether or not a product was good. Okay, look at that. Look how nice that was. So just to be clear, we've been working with uh, BitGo and they've let us be completely straightforward and honest about all the planes we've re reviewed, even when they've not been as good as we want them to, case in point, Stork. Mm -hmm. Storch. And um, so we want to just give them kudos for that. It's always important, um, we feel like, within the hobby industry to work with companies that are willing to stand behind uh, truthfulness in this hobby. It's so easy for somebody to come out and say, look how amazing this 737 Max 9 is, which by the way, it is pretty cool. But you know what? That thing had so many problems that we had to work through to make it what it is, okay? Um, whereas some planes you pull out of the box and they're perfect. Right. So far, this thing's been pretty good. It's just been, you know, more work than we would like compared to a bind and fly. I think it's been a pretty easy build. Yeah. But not everything is the easiest, cheapest, biggest, best, smallest, yeah. biggest. That's just a bunch of BS. It's not the way it the is. The other thing too is, and, and there's not to say that there's not something the est about most planes. I mean, there's something that's great about planes, right? You can always point out some thing about it, some feature. But at the end of the day, we're trying to come at this from an approach of, you know, like I like planes a lot. I know what I like about the planes I like, and I know what I hate about the planes I don't like. Yeah. And then I know what I like about the build, and I know what I don't like about the build. And speaking from experience, with a lot of different planes. I know some of you guys have built a lot more planes than me, um, but we might be a little bit more than average now, I'm assuming. We've figured out the things we hate about building and the things that we love about building and the things that we hate about the unboxing process and the, where the damage comes from and you know what type of, uh, you know, like short leads are gonna be an issue and, and you know, is it gonna be hard to build the swing? Is it gonna be easy to build the swing? Is it gonna be easy to line up the stupid holes? Are we gonna have problems with the nut zerts? Are we gonna have problems with the CA melting the foam? These are the types of things that we try to bring, uh, that little bit of experience and benefit that we can bring to you guys as we review planes in particular and aircraft in particular. Um, so we're not gonna just bring you like some sugar-coated, like, hey, look how amazing this is. Now we might fly it and say, look how amazing it flies. Look how great this thing is. But we're gonna show you the ups and downs that took, uh, you know, getting it from the package to the air. And we're gonna show you all the steps in the middle. And that's what we do here on Brian Phillips RC. Now just keep in mind that 
Sometimes that truthfulness comes back to bite us, as in certain manufacturers don't want to work with us because they're afraid we're going to out them, and we will. <laughs> so right, rightfully so, they should be concerned. And so we have a handful of different vendors that in the past we haven't worked with, and then they started working with us, and it turned out that they were not trying to cover up anything. They just have been good companies, and they just were busy, and they didn't you know, work with us. So we just want to throw that out there in case you guys are watching. I don't know why you'd be watching in the middle of this video. It'd be crazy. But the thing <laughs> is, um, we're always looking to work with new companies. We love working with the companies we work with, and they've been very good to us. This thing is so light. But at the end of the day, really, our allegiance has always been and will continue to be to you, the audience, because you're the ones that help drive any sort of value that we have to the affiliate companies we work with. Because at the end of the day, they're trying to sell planes and we're trying to market the planes with them and help you guys see what's available. And also show us how we put it together and whether or not our outcome was good. And prevent one and dones and encourage people to get back in the hobby that have been out of the hobby on the sidelines for one reason or another. So those are kind of like the big ticket items that we do. And also just evaluating, reviewing the whole aviation lifestyle, which believe it or not, this is a lifestyle. When I first got into this, I used to hear people say stuff like that. And I'm like, whatever, you guys are so full of it. Uh, but they were right because it is really, it has kind of become that for us. Um, and I've always been into airplanes and aviation, things like that. But at the end of the day, what we do here on this channel is not necessarily um, you know, like focused around one particular model. It's, it's about like, you know, this, this is always like a stepping stone. That's kind of the way it is. How are you going to go from where you are to where you want to be? So, all right. So the next thing is now that we've done that, sorry for the tangent. We do that here on Brian Phillips RC a lot. We need to go ahead and do the control horns. Looks like. How are we going to do that without the servos being installed? Seems no, like I would need to inst install the servos first. Install the servos. Oh, it goes like this. But and why then over. does it look like there's four? Those are just the black lines on the side, oh, the yeah, pinstripes. That's, yep. The pinstripes and then the steel wire. So we need to install the elevator and rudder servos. Yeah, the servos the themselves. They don't have any holes pilot drilled for us on this. We may actually have to pilot drill these. This is a plywood right here. Okay, so the servos have been good to work with so far. I've been really impressed. I mean, uh, did they say there were 16 gram servos? 17. 17 gram servos. 17. 17 gram metal gear servos. And they want us to use what type of, these are just the single arms, mm -hmm. which is nice. We have single arms and long arms in the wings. So that means if you have one that breaks, you'll have spares, which is nice. My grandpa always used to use these. I was like, why do you use the round ones? I don't know. I think people use the round ones for throttle a lot. And I don't know if it was just like, nothing can get caught on it. Mm. You know, it's like a big safety feature. Mm. So you give up a little bit of weight savings for the safety of knowing that you can't get another linkage in there that would bind it. Hmm. I don't know. Sure. Also, you can drill your holes wherever you want on that. See? So that's kind of a different setup. Anyway, my grandpa's now passed away that used to build these airplanes and we'd work together on it. It was a really good, good thing to do and I'm really glad that we don't have to look back and regret uh, having, you know, not spent those uh, projects together, which is pretty cool that we were able to do that. So if you guys have kids that you want to build planes with and grandparents that you want to build planes with or whatever it is, or, you know, daughters, sons, whatever it is, brothers, friends, whatever, whatever relationship you're interested in um, nurturing. And I would highly encourage you to get your, your friends and family involved in this. This can be a really family affair or it can be a, um, you know, like a family habit. It's a very, you know, wholesome, fun thing to do. Very safe, uh, reasonably easy thing to get into. A little bit hard to get out of. So that's good. Like every other addiction. I would definitely encourage you if you have a remote interest, uh, if your partner does definitely share it if you can, it's a lot more fun that way. Um, and then there's a lot less sneaking around and snakes in the basement. If that's the case. A lot of snakes in our basement. She knows about our basement. Yep. I'm well aware of our basement. Yes, our basement. There's no hiding the planes in our basement. No. If you can hide the planes in our basement, you have built another basement, another layer <laughs> Somewhere deep. Somewhere else. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody else's say. basement. Somebody else's basement. Because yep. this one, no. There's no hiding it. If you go in our basement, 
You, you can see the planes yes. when you first walk in. Everywhere. Everywhere. Mm -hmm. On top of each other, around each other, and behind each other. Mm -hmm. And that's, not, that's just the ones you can see. There are not enough snakes to cover up the planes in our basement. So now we need to run these servos to the center position so that I can, ugh. There's a whole pile of stuff here and I'm probably blocking the view. So we'll just show you how to do this again. It's really simple. If I'm doing this backward, let me know in the comments below. I'm sure there's gonna be about 40 opinions. There's only technically two ways to do this <laughs> and there'll be 40 opinions. These are really easy to build, by the way. I've had servos that are not easy to build and I've had servos that are really easy to build. And personally speaking, I like the ones that are easy and I've been very happy with the servos in this model, which is awesome. They do seem a little bit on the clunky side when I was running them though. So I hope that doesn't translate to mm. control issues. I don't think it will. I think it's just, there's huge throws on this plane. So they want to have a lot of movement. Okay, so now take a look at this. There's one, two, three. See that weird one? We didn't use that on any of the other ones mm -mm. and we aren't gonna use it on this one either, but we are gonna use these ones and we are gonna use these ones. Okay, so this one is wrong. It's just a different size for a different application. Not sure why they're in there. Hmm. By the way, I, when I'm building a plane, it, I was, it seems like such a stupid little thing, but I love taking bags when they're done. <laughs> and I have this little pile over here. You guys have seen me do it a couple of times on this build. That column is where we collect the bags and then we make a packet at the end where all the stuff is easy to find for future recovery. And believe it or not, I actually do recover them more often than I'd like to admit. That means I screwed up and crashed. Okay, so now that that's through, I can go ahead and run these wires. Now, depending on where the receiver goes, I, I don't know where the receiver's gonna end up. Would you mind sliding that thing out all the way? I think the receiver's probably gonna end up like on the side here maybe, just because it'll be easier to get the battery loaded in here. This plane's gonna be a lot better for loading the battery. The storage was terrible for that. You had to get it way up in the nose and then there were screws that went in and it made it really hard to get uh, position in there. So I'm glad they've worked out some of those issues. Now you could also run this wire through the middle here, which is one thought, because then both wires would come out through the middle. I don't know if I like that. I think what I wanna do is I just wanna make a decision to go to the left or to the right. What do you think? Well, I mean, they have it coming out, you know, one on the left, one on the right. Yeah, but that's a preference. Thing. Yeah. I'm just thinking along the lines of wherever the receiver goes, I wanna have plenty of room for it, but I don't want it to be in the way of the battery. Oh, they show this going that direction, okay. Yep, this pocket's big enough. I can get in there and spin them. Sometimes that step alone will take 20 minutes Yeah, because you'll be fighting. I think the wire should go down and under and I think that this should be, <gasps> I didn't lose it. Thank goodness. Let's just go ahead and put this screw on. No, we're gonna have, this, we're gonna have the, the thing hooked up in a minute. Okay. You know, the thing. Yeah, do you still have it? Yeah. It's right there. Yeah, it's right there. Okay, so you see what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna pass this under. Okay. Through the same hole. Okay. And then I can drop that in and give it a little twist. All right. So they're showing it like that. I wanna make sure that things are gonna line up before I commit to a position, okay? And the other thing is I wanna make sure that the wires are not underneath so they cause a bulge on the film because that's the film right there that you can see. Mm. They're suggesting screwing it here. I'd like to screw it there if I can, because you've got the maximum amount of strength. I am probably gonna very reluctantly pre-drill those holes. <sighs> I'm just afraid if I break the plywood, that'd be a terrible place to split it. And you have enough room on the outside of those for the control arms, right? Point it out to the edge. Yeah, I'm gonna center these right now. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to servo test. Click once, go to servo test. I'm just gonna plug these in one at a time. Okay. Okay, so that's centered. Looks like I'm, now that's centered. And I want this to go toward the outside of the aircraft, right? Mm -hmm. Immediately dropped it. Okay, so that's pretty close to center. 
I would say. I have to pull it out anyway. Then this screw can drop down in there. Yeah, it's a little bit long for that. Okay, so we're just gonna torque this in there like we mean it. Okay. Right, so then this one that I dropped down, I gotta slip out of the corner. That, that's a lot easier than a biplane. Dancing Wings makes a few biplanes and some of them look absolutely gorgeous. But I'm like scared to build them. Because I know how big of a time commitment it's gonna be. Okay, so that's centered. You know, this plane reminds me a lot of the Omp Challenger. Mm -hmm. The only difference is you can actually get this one. Mm -hmm. We, oh wait, did we do the Challenger? Mm -hmm. Did we do the other one that was like the Challenger? Mm -hmm. Oh, the Bighorn's the other one. Yeah, we did the Challenger. So we haven't done the Bighorn yet. This one's not wanting to go on very well. I wonder why that is. Um, there you go. That doesn't feel right though. See that, how it's not squishing down on there? Hmm. I hope that's not something wrong with the spline. I don't think it is. Let's look inside of here. Actually, I don't see anything weird in there. You want to try a different one? No. I'm gonna make sure that it gets seated properly before I go too much further though. Oh, that sounded terrible. Mm. Did you hear the pop? Mm hmm Hmm. Mm. I don't know what the deal is. I'm just gonna use this knife because I can't see in here very good. Feels like there's nothing in there. That means it would have to be on the outside of the spline. Gosh, I don't see anything weird. Let's try going the opposite direction. See that dropped on there, but it didn't want to seat all the way. Huh, it did go. Oh, it feels like it's going on okay now. See, it's seated. You can see right there how it's flush. Make sure it gets flush. If it's not flush, figure it out. Looks fine. There is a certain point on some of these planes where it's like, you know, you run into those weird circumstances like that and you're just like, you just kind of got to move on from it. And if it otherwise behaves right, call it good. All right, so that's that's where they anticipate we're gonna have them. Okay, so where do they, they say the outside. Mm -hmm. The outside, okay. So while this is not secured, you know, what I, you know what I'm gonna do? I don't normally do this because it's not always necessary. I'm gonna go ahead and use a Y cable here and then I can have both of them Powered to oh, the center. Just plug in somehow. Yeah. We did this a lot on the storch because there were so many things going on. Okay, so that'll center. Keep them both centered while working. Okay. Good. We don't really care what direction they change or which direction they move as long as they move. Okay. So I can twist that. Kind of slip this through. time I stab myself. How much is coming out? There's quite a bit quite coming a bit. out. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. So I've got some room to work with it. So when you guys see these long format videos and you, and you think, gosh, I wonder what type of problems he's going to run into. And then you watch them and you say, 
Yeah, I'm really glad I watched him struggle through that process instead of struggling through it myself, or maybe, maybe I helped to encourage you to make your decision for this particular aircraft versus another aircraft. The best way you can show us your Thanksgiving would be to just buy the plane from the link in the video description below. You don't pay any extra. We just get small commissions from the manufacturers we work with and it helps them to know that we're directing you to them at some point. And so everybody, it's kind of like a win, win, win. Everybody wins. You win as a buyer. We win as a, you know, a YouTube channel. And then the people that are supporting us um, will also win too. Okay, there it goes. So poke, poke through that time. So if you uh, have to buy it from your local hobby shop because you've got some special rationale, I mean, of course, we become your hobby shop largely because we answer so many of your questions and different things like that. Um, and believe it or not, we do spend a lot of time doing that. Well, that's bending that a lot. So there's, it shows it coming like out the bottom. What? The control horn. What do you mean? Instead of like yours is. Oh, it's in the top. top? Yeah. Does, would that help that problem? Um, I don't know. Let's try that. So anyway, what I was getting at was uh, if you decide to buy from the links below, then you'll be supporting us and we'll be eternally grateful for your support in that regard. And that also helps us to grow clout in the RC community with the different companies that sell and market these things uh, to work with us, which gives us an opportunity to bring you more footage, which also gives you a better chance at getting help on the planes that you're gonna build in the future. Okay, camera crew, I tried what you suggested. And I did that on the wings, incidentally, guys, if you weren't paying attention close. Okay. I can't say that it's a huge difference, but there's definitely a lot of load on that. I almost feel like it just needs to be over here where there's less mechanical loading, but there's also less material there. I think that's a good trade-off though. We should have room for your for clearance. sweep. Oh yeah. Is it moving? Yes. Show the people. I'm gonna go sweep. Okay, I'm going to the center. Now I wanna show you one thing too you can do. If you bring this all the way over and try to take as much of that flex out of the rod as possible, it's gonna give you better success, I guarantee it. The other thing too is I want this to be 90 degrees. You see how that's not straight? That's 90 degrees of the moment, of the movement, okay? So instead of being like this with a bent rod, it's like this with a square rod. That is gonna make everything smoother. Okay. I mean, it's of minimal consequence, not a huge difference. It'd be nice if you could do that, actually. Will it fit? Mm. I would love to have it braced up against the side. I don't know, I think we're okay. I don't think it's touching. feel like it needs to be up higher too. Like if it was up, you know, half an inch. Oops. You know what else is kind of nice about if we put those all the way out to the side like that? Hmm. I wonder if the receiver would fit right there and then you'd have tons of room for a battery tray. Hmm. I think it's either, it's okay, so it's either option A is what they suggest, which is way in here, lots of loading. I'm not doing that. Option B would be something like this where we go square with this centered, we would square it. So option, option B, I can test by putting a screw here and then just leaving it. I can also push this out of the way. I wanna see how big the receiver is. So what I'll do is I'll do one screw right now Remember how I said I was gonna pre-drill these? Mm -hmm. Let's see. Let's see how this goes. I wanna see if they go or not. Ah, son of a biscuit. 
That's so annoying. This thing, I've got so many of them, I should sacrificially just open this up. Make and one. Make it. Yeah, make it my drill. Um, I could actually do it with the wiggle ones, probably, or whatever these brand are, whatever they're called. I bet it would go. Okay, so we've got it pointing straight down. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh yeah, there she goes. She's going now. You know what? That was totally acceptable. Mm -hmm. I feel like that was acceptable. It's gonna wiggle when I do this. See? See when it's centered? Now I can really get that thing centered. But see, I'm just thinking, I have to, let's pause and see how big that receiver is. Okay, so, sorry, I didn't really show opening this. <laughs> I've showed opening it a million times. So we got the wire for the battery lead. And then I wanna see how this fits. If we can get it to fit there, that would be really sweet. That would be nice, actually. That's like a really nice spot. In fact, you could go back here. That would be so nice. Look how much room you have for batteries. I don't know, camera crew. I think that's it. Okay, so the only question would so be... So we can still do the angle. That was the answer we were looking right. for. Because if the angle is the issue, then really, like, if we know this is going to go back here, then we can kind of... I mean, I'm not saying we got to glue it in there or something. Because the ESC is going to go... ESC is up here. We don't have to okay. worry about that yet. Okay. But look, even at an angle, we're still golden. Okay. Right. We're definitely not going to have any conflict with wires then, because then, like, really, you don't even you don't even come back out. You, you just, go like, right put them back straight in, in. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the ESC can't be back here. That's too far back. Okay. Right. So the uh, Air eighty three sixty T AS three X and safe equipped. So we'll come back to you. Beautiful thing. And then yeah, the ESC's got short leads on it. There's no way we can run that back. Right. You'd have to run big extensions. You generally don't want to do extensions there. Yeah. It would be nice to have this back here just because it's out of the way. But then, of course, you know, like you only need so much room for a battery. It's a 2200 4S is what they suggest, right? Yeah, 22 to 2800. So 22 to 2800. So yep. we could do... Oh, we have them sitting over by the transmitter there. Yeah. Okay, so getting back to the point. Sorry, guys. That was kind of a lot of... Um... Okay, so we're going to let this sweep... I'm gonna go square, at square, I'm gonna make this where it needs to be, okay? Mm-hmm. Please don't break. Yeah, buddy. Nice, love it. Okay, now we replicate the other side, uh, which should be a little bit easier because we've done it once. That's we're we gonna the, show them that. Yeah, okay. we will, because this is this is we're gonna run into different stuff here. I would imagine. See, the wings were like the exact same steps, only mirrored. This is kind of like still the same sort of the, the whole process. The reason the camera crew is asking is because we're running out of memory and battery power on the camera. So we have to try to, and then once we stop the filming, then of course I can't continue onward with the build because we're in the process of filming it. Ah, there it goes. Now that we're through, spin that around. Oh, I don't know if, did I do that wrong? Did I do that back? No, I did that right. Okay, so now we're gonna get that into the same kind of situation where the wires are where we want the wires. Okay, so then this needs to be tight like that. Okay, and then I want that to be true, so. And you can definitely tell there's a little bit of... OK. 
Okay, so now square, tight, we should be good. So I'm going to take and screw in the first screw, which is going to be here. We haven't been short on any hardware, huh? Nope. That's the other thing too, which is pretty good. See this one, we don't have to overthink everything. We just kind of install it, which is it's always nice when you get to that step in the build where process of elimination has kicked in and everything is all starting to kind of fall together, which is super exciting. Like putting the landing gear on, that should take minutes. This plane's gonna be built in just a few short minutes. Okay, now we look at the rods coming out here. Make sure everything feels good. Okay. Actually put this inside the airplane to just chill. Okay, so now when we look, there's build up here. There's a brace here. That's void of support. It's an open triangle. This is an open triangle. So we're gonna need the control arm right here. So these control arms, these ones are probably gonna reach all the way through, I'm guessing. So we may actually need to use both sides of these ones. Yeah, we do have to use the back side on these, which makes sense. On the wings, we didn't have enough uh, clearance to do that. Okay. There's a rough surface on the bottom of my counter here. Oh yeah, that worked really nice actually. I'm surprised I didn't think of that earlier. Perfect, perfect. Okay, so then this is gonna go like that. So now we can click to the center. That's in the center now. Everything is where it needs to be. So now my next step is I have to get these assemblies installed. And this is just like what we did on the wing earlier. One washer. Do we want this up or down? Does it, it says on the top, on the top. So I'm gonna chuck this thing. I'm gonna chuck it in. Okay, so that's chucked in. I'm just thinking about this, so this needs to go here. Let that run through. Let it run back. Push hard. See, it comes off on my finger there, a little bit of plastic. Whatever the threads displace until such a time as it is allowed to spin free. Okay, so that's what we want. Unchuck it. Use a drill bit to do the same thing if you want. I just like that because I don't want to get another tool out for that particular step. Then of course, a uh, screwdriver to loosen this. Big screwdriver to loosen this for some stupid reason, which I hadn't thought about it, but I could just do that. That would work pretty good. Yeah, that worked pretty dang good actually. Okay, so then we can start dry fitting everything. I need you to, yeah, thank you. Clear mm -hmm. that. All right, so now my objective here is to figure out where I'm gonna be drilling to put this on, okay? This is, it's, this is the easiest step that shouldn't be hard, but it always is, okay? Because there's always something that comes into play that you're not thinking about. So what I'm gonna do in this case, I have them centered. Hold that down, hard, thanks. Having the camera crew hold the plane for me so it doesn't walk. Okay, so that's, this needs to be centered mechanically and I want that to be as close to the center of the action as possible. But then I don't want that little triangle to hit. So I may need to cut this edge off if it hits here, okay? So that's something we need to watch for. 
So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna favor this back just, just a hair, ever so slightly, and then I'll have to loosen that screw. Okay, so I'm gonna go something like that, because I can see the thickness of material and it comes out to about where my pinky nail is there. That makes sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm looking for the neutral position up and down. And then I'm gonna go ahead and grab the screw. And the screwdriver's probably a little bit too long for this one. I'm gonna try to put my fingernail on there to kind of keep it and see what's gonna happen is everything gets in the way then. Hold tight on. Mm -hmm. So once I get this started, now if this goes all the way through and bites the plastic on the other side, that's our objective. See, show the people the other side now. See how it's come all the way through? Mm -hmm. You are not gonna get enough purchase to make a difference, I doubt, into the backside of that plastic. I just don't see it happening. But we're gonna try it just to see. Now there's a trick, you can actually put this in inside out and you'll get more sleeve in through the balsa wood. Okay, it's supposed to go like this, like that, like that. So the little bumps are out. But you can run it this way and get more purchase on your bite point. And it'll suck that right into the balsa wood in this case. Okay, which is what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna back this off and I'm pushing with my left finger and then look what happens. As this tightens, should suck that thing into the balsa wood and make a really, really tight bite. See what's happening? Show them from above. Mm -hmm. See how it pulled that in? Got lots of purchase now. I'll go. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and readjust this. Hold that tight, please. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now I can center that. And we'll glue all that stuff and we'll get the retainer collars on which are down here in just a, a couple of minutes because we don't know all the different things we're gonna have to undo to get it finished. Okay, so now another screw. Oh yeah, very good, very good purchase. This is gonna be great, it's gonna be great. Okay, now look, see what it's doing? Sucking it in nice and tight. And you're gonna have lots of strength there because you're biting this whole vertical member, which is important. Oh gosh, it's just, there's certain steps on these builds where you just don't have very good control over where you need your screw to be held. Okay, so once it starts biting, it's no big deal. Okay, hold that down again, please. Mm -hmm. Thank you, hon. Okay, so you'll note, uh, I do have the camera crew helping me hold, which is somewhat unusual for the builds. We try not to. Drag her into the build part. Okay. So now I don't know if you guys can tell what's going on there. But because I went the other direction, I have lots of purchase, okay? I'm getting the entire depth of this now. The entire depth of this, in addition to just the thin material here. That's the trade-off for having the tips shoot through. Normally the tips would be covered up, but the thing is, I like this better. It's a lot better bite, it's more strength. I'm willing to put up with a little bit of penetration here. Plus we can put some CA or hot glue or whatever over that if that was an issue. But I feel like that is like one robust connection. So now we're gonna carefully, I don't wanna mimic that yet on the elevator until we've had a chance to test the, the throw. So now we can legit test it, okay? So I'm gonna step first. That's all the way. We're not hitting. OK, 
Okay, so you'll note that we have one mechanical issue right here, and that is we're not square. So we're gonna fix that right now. How many milliamps do we have on that? 68? 68. Worth of dead load? I don't like that. Okay, so that's pretty dang tight. Let's put it in sweep. Oh yeah, gorgeous. This, it'd be nice to clip off the excess. I'm gonna look straight down and see where this stops. It may hit. Think so? So when we're done fixing this rod to there, we may need to clip off the excess or bend it. Mm. Probably we'll just bend it at a slight angle. Okay, so I'm comfortable with all that. Now we just need to put this on. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna snap to the center. I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do. Now you don't have to do it this way, but this is the way I'm doing it, okay? There's still, you know, possibility we're gonna need some mechanical trim. So I'm gonna get too super bent out of shape about this because mechanical trim is always a reality of model building. Just a little bit of CA in there. I'm gonna hold this with my fingers until such a time as this is tight, that's gonna hold it positionally. Then I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna actually hold hard. See, now we're nice and square still. Now I need to flip this over. So camera crew, if you can, I'm gonna flip it on its side actually. Okay, okay so uh, where did those two little things, here they are. They're super small, there's a washer, and then a thumb nut. It's gonna do one drip of CA across those threads. This is one of those things where, no, you don't have to do this, but I would highly encourage you to do this because this is where you're gonna have something come out on you and cause a problem. Just awkward to do this step. There's never a real easy way to guide these things on. Okay, so slid that on. Touching the exacto tip to the bottom of the screw. Okay, so it started. I'm gonna run that all the way down until it's just shy of tight. Now, why is it just shy of tight? Because if you tighten that there, you're gonna bind your point, which means this thing isn't gonna swivel anymore. You need that to swivel. That's why I'm not a huge fan of this type of mechanism because that can be backed off by movement, okay? See? Currently, it's not undoing itself, so that's good. All right, so now the next thing is on the elevator, kind of the same scenario, but on a different surface. Uh, how are we doing on battery life and stuff? Um, I'm not sure, but we should, we're, we're gonna be getting close. Getting close? All right. Well, if we're getting close, then I think we should try to get this other one done before we pause or whatever it is we have to do. This is probably the quickest build we've had for dancing wings. It's actually gonna be better than the little one. <laughs> Which is ridiculous. It is ridiculous, I agree. Totally ridiculous. Okay, so same scenario earlier we did this um, with side cutters. I'm gonna do it with scissors this time just to show you it can be done. It's harder because you have to really support that blade. And then if you get in there real tight, you can cut it nice and neat. So that's another way you can do that. And then always, especially with a covered, covered plane, you wanna have a smooth surface so you don't cut your finish. Okay. And then this is going on the elevator. So obviously it's gonna move up and down. That CA joint is gonna have some CA in it once in a while, so it's not a big deal. Okay, then we have to disassemble this. Get that prepared. Work through the same steps. Camera crew, you see where that went? It's on the edge of mm -hmm. the instructions. Should be easy to see. I don't know why I stood up. That was kind of dumb. 
Okay, so we'll put that in to the chuck, outside, all the way in, all the way out. When it's all the way out, I push, trying to, I'm resisting, see, it's trying to push it out. I'm resisting, I'm resisting, I'm resisting, 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 going forward, going back. Okay, so that just cleans out the hole. So it's a little bit bigger. Now that's not gonna come out super easy still, which is nice for security reasons. You don't want it to pop out, but I think I may have done that on the wrong side, hard to tell. Hmm. Yeah, that's on the wrong side. So we'll tighten that on. Okay, so we're good there. Out of the chuck you go. Now, I kind of hate to have to do this, but I, I'm gonna have to probably put that, that thing on there. Look at that. Look how much that's gonna fold out. I hate that. Where do they say to put it? That's where they say to put it. So what don't you like about them? Hmm? What don't you like about that? Uh, it's like really bending this rod a lot. Oh. I mean, it's like a lot, lot. Look how much is bending the rod. Because mm. by the time I get it up here where it's supposed to be, yeah, right. that's going to be really doing a lot of bending. Now, that doesn't mean you can't bend this, but then it's going to pull back in when it's going the other direction. And you don't want it back here. I mean, you could, hypothetically, you could do it back here and make the sweep longer, but that's not acceptable. I think really what needs to happen is where this comes out, there'll have to be a bend here and then square that, you know, but I don't like that either. I don't like it, but that's what we're going to do. See what I just did? I just bent that square. You see how I just bent that? So I just made a little notch on there. Not ideal, but necessary, okay? I didn't overdo it. I just did as little as I can do to get the job done. I may need to go just a hair more. And you see it's way out here so it can move in and out free without a problem. Okay, so I gotta go a little bit more on that. So I'm bracing where I don't want it to bend, and then I'm bending out. Then I'm bracing where it wants to come back, and I'm gonna bend it back in. See? Why are we doing that, camera crew? So that it's not bending the rod, or putting load on the rod all the time. Yeah, right. See, like even there, it's putting load on the rod, just sliding that up into position. See, I don't think I have enough. I think I need to go more. Mm-hmm. You go a little bit more. Open yourself up to more mechanical issues if you bend them like that, by the way, guys. Well, it's harder on the servos, right? Not if it's bent real bad, though. It can, it can be. You gotta be back far enough because you got metal rod right there, okay? I think we just go ahead and screw it in and hope for the best. Okay. I don't really see how else you can do it. And then you'll put that little thumb screw on at the end. Yeah, I don't know when else you would do it. <laughs> okay. I mean, you kind of have to... There are certain steps where it's like there's no really good step. I need you to brace that frame without asking. Uh, okay, hold on a second. Okay. Just every time until I tell you different on this part here, please. Because I'm not going to be paying attention on that side. Okay, so there's that. So remember, this is going to go through and then come out the other side. Okay, so there's that. Then I'm going to take the back half of that piece of plastic. Where did that end up? I don't see it. Here, let go. There it right is. There. 
Okay, so this one, uh, I have to think about this for two seconds. There's more threads coming through, so I feel like I can go ahead and do this the normal way. This one's gonna let me fit uh, just going the normal way. Oh yeah, that's fine. Because I'll, I'll get plenty of purchase there. So I don't have to run that one backward. This must be stainless steel or something. Or is this not a magnetic tip? I thought this had a magnetic tip. I thought it did. Whoops. Hold on, I'll go. Okay, I guess I'm just aligning my screw. I'll loosen my first one so I can pivot the bottom plate. There we go. Got it lined up now. Okay, then the third screw is gonna be a real bear cat because I'm mm -hmm. not sure exactly how I'm gonna get in there. Cause look at this. I'm gonna have to kind of come in from a, there we go, that works. Mm. What are the chances? Uh, let go. Now you can press. Wait, wait. This cardboard got slipped. Okay. All right, now you can go. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, good bite. Good purchase. Good purchase. Good purchase. Now you're not depending on one little bite point. You're depending on this large piece that's gonna transfer the mechanical action all the way across the control surface. All right, so now at this point, we can go ahead and test the movement. Okay, straight. I don't have this tightened yet, so. I think I'm just gonna go ahead and put the glue on now because it's gonna be like a struggle to get that in there. Mm -hmm. One drip and one drip. I hear the buzzing, I'm not a big fan of that. Hold that down please. twisted because it's trying to find a flat spot. Oh, self-engagement. Okay, so we need to bend this or cut it. Okay. Think I can cut it? Mm-hmm. Not with that. I wonder if that would work. Yeah. I just gotta figure out how to bend it safely. For now. Let's see how it does. Then we study the movement. And look at the loading, guys. That's why this tool is so nice. Call me crazy. Is there a spot where it says like 900 milliamps? There's an eight. Oh, there's a nine that time. I'm going to hold it and try to really load it. I'm holding the wing. Show them what I'm doing. See this? Just to see. That's a lot of strength. Okay. I mean, we're gonna go back to the center now. Now that we're in the center, I'm gonna see if I can, I should be able to cut this. These are the smaller lineman pliers. 
It's kind of hard to get in there and cut this now. Garbage. All right, I'm leaving a little bit of length in case we miscalculated, and that is sharp, which I don't like. And I'm gonna cut this too, because there's too much. All right, so that looks a lot better. I'm happy with the way that that turned out. So now the next step is what? Well, you need to put the thumb screw on that one, right? Oh yeah, that true. little washer. Yeah, the little washer and the thumb screw, perfect. Okay, so I'm gonna do that. Probably that worked pretty good with the knife. You, you are moving the instructions, but it's got my nut on top of it. Oh, son of a gun. When you drop these small pieces, it's like the worst part of the build right there, I can tell you. Ugh. Yeah, that's a small piece, goodness gracious. See if I can. That's not gonna work very good. This is an awkward spot, folks. Could have put that on at the beginning, I suppose. That presupposes that you know that it'll work. Right, exactly. So one tip I can give you about this is if you can Try not to get too super frustrated about the screws and nuts and washers, which is tough. It will make life easier when you're building. Throwing things doesn't help, usually. No, it doesn't. Sometimes it does. Not in this application. Maybe temporarily. Make you feel better. But then you have to go find that thing you threw. Yeah. Just remember, if this were a dynam, you'd be building it and then it would still be terrible when you're done. This is, this is gonna be a nice plane when it's done. Be a very nice plane, actually. I'm excited for it. Now, I'm not excited about that tip. That, that is sharp. I cut that not very smartly. Mm. I wonder if I could just try again and just cut it better. Just couldn't make the angle. Yeah, I'm just gonna cut it square. Okay, that's a lot better. Okay. We'll just find that with our feet. Okay, good plan. Um, okay, so the next step would be landing gear. Yeah, and hopefully maybe we can get the gear done and then we'll probably have to stop and... Because of memory and battery? Yeah. Okay, so everything is buttoned up here and centered. So we'll unplug. We'll leave this kind of out of the way for now. And like you said, camera crew, we're gonna quickly jump on to the landing gear. You already kind of know some of the next steps. All right, landing gear, because we worked through this earlier. Mm-hmm. So what is the plan for this, camera crew? So you need that aluminum piece and then those long black bolts and the nuts that went with it and the wheels, yeah. Okay. So what do they suggest? Building the assembly and then mounting it? Yes. Okay. Which way does it go? Does it go this way? It goes this way. That's a great question. Yep, it goes this way. Okay. I'm thinking it might be easier to mount the just thing. Put it on there. Yeah, just mount it. I don't know if it's um, I'm not going to use Loctite on this because I'm just not a big proponent of Loctite on model aircrafts, model aircraft, uh, namely because we use a lot of Loctite on metal to metal contact points. But then when you start getting involved with the models we do, they end up being a lot of plastic and foam. And the solvents that carry the active ingredients in Loctite tend to eat plastic and foam, or both. 
Well, and you always have CA out if you're See, doing this, this. Yeah, it's just a little bit. It's right, it's it's not like you're trying to make it never come apart. Right. You're just trying to make it like not come out easily. Ooh, that's tight. Nice hardware, by the way. It's like stainless steel. And we've still had enough of it. We have not had one that we're short this build, which is awesome. I don't know if they heard us complaining on the last one. I kind of doubt it. Okay. And then one more. So guys, if you're watching this build series and you like what you see and you're like, you know what, we want you to keep doing that, even though it's tedious and we know it's frustrating to have to film all these steps for the camera crew and everything. We appreciate you guys watching, first of all. Second of all, if you enjoy it and you want to help support us, buy the planes from the links in the video description below. Also, we have brianphillipsrc.com, which is www.brianphillipsrc.com. Not to be confused with www.youtube.com forward slash brianphillipsrc. Yes. Which would be almost exactly the same thing. You can go from here to there or there to here. It doesn't matter which way you go. But at the end of the day, the camera crew has been working on that and trying to get that so that it's uh, helpful for you guys as you're going through your process of determining what you want to buy and what you want to look at. Because obviously a lot of what we're trying to figure out is uh, what plane is going to be right for you guys. Okay. There's my battery warning. So we should be able to get the gear okay. done. All right. So let's do this. All right. So we have this shaft, which goes through here. Mm -hmm. And then we're supposed to do what with what? Whoa, 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 whoa. Pump the brakes. What? Pump the brakes. They sent the wrong type of hardware. That's not threaded. That's only threaded part way down. How do they expect that to work? Ugh. So we have to go the other way then. Well. <sighs> Why can't things just work the way they're supposed to? It'd be so much easier. But see that wheel looks like it's not spaced out. Maybe they. This is the wrong type of bolt. It's supposed to be threaded all the way down. Oh, yeah. It's not. So we were just spoke too soon, obviously. Sorry, there's a huge glare I can't see. I don't know if this is going to work. Yeah, I don't know if it's going to work. We'll have to feed this through. Oh, jeez. Feed that through like that. Gosh, look at that. That side looks pretty good, but look at that side. What the heck were they thinking? That's terrible. Come on, man. Don't be sending it like that. Look, who drilled that hole? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this, we're gonna feed it through, and we're gonna do it like that. Then this is gonna come in here and we're gonna set our distance with these jam nuts. And there's three of them, which is good. They did not include a nylock, so that was another Chinese lie. Look at this. There isn't even enough to get that braced. That is really annoying. So these wheel pants are not gonna work very good. And we only have three, which is not really enough to do the trick. <laughs> we would need four to do it right. Unless that's threaded, which is definitely not threaded. Okay, so let's say that's where it's supposed to be, which this is not right, I understand. I'm just showing for principle, okay? So you can do that, right? And that's all hunky-dory. First of all, that's gonna make a hell of a lever. So what's gonna happen is this is not gonna stay put, okay? That's the first problem. The second problem is you gotta get that thing on there too. Mm. Okay? Mm -hmm. And then screws are gonna hold that wheel pan. Mm. So I think what we have to do is we have to come in here quite a bit. Okay, so we'll just kind of feed this in until we basically run into the other nut. We're gonna see if that works. Okay, like this. Then we're gonna see if we can get this to collar in there like that. If you had a big washer, you could use a big flat washer would bite that whole assembly. Oh, 
I do not know if that's going to work. So we're going to have to go to the steel then. Now if we go to the steel, let's see if this works. Then we can jam nut this because we're out of threads that way. Let's see. Maybe we get lucky. I mean, I'm all about it if it works, but the thing is, it's like, come on, people. Landing gear a pain. You gotta send the red stuff. Ooh, that was probably not the right thing to do. Okay, so that spins sloppily, but it spins. Worst case scenario, that's what you're gonna get, right? I don't know, some people don't even like wheel pants. I think they're usually a pain. Yeah, 99.9% .9 of the time. See, look. Yeah, because now you're going to rub. Like badly, too. Yeah. Not a little bit, badly. Uh, okay, so backup plan. Goodness gracious. That was my fault there. Okay, so we're going to run that out about like halfway. We're gonna go like about double knot thickness there. And then we're gonna run this down again. See if we can get that to fit now. Hmm, that probably work. How do your pants go on? One leg at a time, just like everybody else. What, what, what? What were you hoping I would say? Hmm? Did I strike a chord with that joke? <laughs> Wheel pants. Oh. See that? That is really, really, really tight. Really tight. Yeah. The slot is cut way too far forward. It needs to be back further. Otherwise, you're just going to constantly struggle to keep that thing free. What about no pants? I mean, uh, that's always an option. Nope, that's definitely too small. Three millimeters? Oh, yeah, baby. Well, I don't know, guys. I, I'm tempted to just go pant free, to just go around with no pants on. I mean, it's, it's, it's not ideal. I can tell you that for sure. And the other thing too is like, look, this is allowed to play here now. Well, yeah. That's so that's not acceptable. That's not work. So that can't be the, that can't be the solution. Um, all right. So really the only thing we've got left in the arsenal would be to run one nut up to the the place where the threads stop okay so then i can use this three millimeter to bite while i come in here and torque that down stretch the threads out then that keeps that from spinning and getting bound up then this one's going to come back and it's going to bite the shaft here and set our gap Okay. okay, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So everybody that's watching this and is like, well, Brian, just tell us how to do it. You know, where did the other nut go? Camera crew? Oh, there it is. We figure this stuff out on the spot so you don't have to. But the thing is, I still have to figure it out. <laughs> Reminds me of a comment from many, 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 many moons ago on our timber float build. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. One of the do-gooders reprimanded me for not knowing what I was doing when I started. Okay. Hmm. Made a lasting impact. Apparently Obviously. So. And that's part of the reason we do what we do is so that people understand your Hold that down, process. please. Hold that down. Thank you. They understand how we arrived where we arrived. Yeah. Not just followed some Chinese instructions that were wrong. You know, part of part of this journey in the RC world is is learning how to do this, not just 
what exactly to do in a given circumstance. I mean, you can, you can follow along a lot of steps, but to me, it seems like it makes better sense to just kind of like learn a skill as a group, you know, together or whatever. It's looking pretty good. Yeah. Or decent. Very optimistic. Well. Very optimistic that that's going to hold up. I mean, it does look good. You're right. It does look good. I'm with you there. But I just, I feel like it's just so on the gnats, you know what, of working. Well. I think it's time. I think it's time to s stick it in the hole. How, there's no hole on your pants. Yes, I understand. That. Okay. Just checking. No, I understand that that is a problem. And I talked about that earlier. It's definitely a problem. And by the way, I need you to not let that rock on me okay. while we're doing this. Cause this is going to be a kind of a challenging one. And we're going to get one shot at success and then it's just going to be failure, failure city if we do it wrong. Okay, dokie. Yeah, I know. Those are my favorites. Can I s slide this cardboard here. in? You can slide the cardboard in or out. Okay. Here, hold down, but hold down here so that you're on the flat. Yep. Okay, so this you're going to need to probably have a hand because I want to give myself as much clearance as possible without making it look totally stupid. Okay, so I want this to be here. So I'm gonna set the first screw in, hope for the best, and continue onward. Okay. Ooh, excuse me. Hmm. Okay. <sighs> okay. All right. Go ahead and let go. See, I feel like, now let's look at it this way. See, that looks nice. Mm -hmm. But look where the wheel is. I don't know if that's gonna stay. Because I wanna make sure this thing's lined up properly. Wheel pants are a pain, guys. Hold here. Holding again. Right. If you it. move all this stuff every time, it makes it a little bit challenging. I gotta see. Okay, so now I'm gonna take a hand screwdriver and tighten the last little bit. Hmm. Smell the fiberglass. Mm -hmm. It's that weird sweet smell. Okay, let go. Now I want to see how this looks. See, that looks pretty good alignment. But it doesn't clear. Right. And that's exactly what I was afraid of. And I knew that we were going to run into that. Just because the nature of these pants, I could tell that this was going to rub somewhere. And if it rubs a little bit, it's going to run like really bad. I'm just going to twist it and see if I can get it to free. Anytime you rub on wheel pants, it makes the landing gear work really poorly. Let's see if I can relax this a little bit. Try to center it out a little bit. Can you hold that please? So we'll loosen that a little bit and then I'll just turn the screw. See how I'm turning the screw. That brings out the assembly. Then I have to have that hold still while I'm turning the nut. Try that. Okay, let's see if that does it. Nope, not enough. Need more. See what's going on? Like this wheel pant is like this and the, and the wheel, the wheel is square and the wheel pants like this. So I need them to be in alignment and they're not. So I'm wondering if I can turn this, see that? That's allowing it to pull out, but that doesn't mean it's going to go out. It doesn't stay out. 
Yep. I'm gonna tighten it back down. Okay, so now the other thing is, I'm wondering if I can can hear me ripping fiberglass as I do this. Mm -hmm. That's a bad, bad sound. Worst case scenario, the wheel pants are coming off. I don't want to admit defeat that easy though. I don't like letting these machines win. Just think if that's what happened in Terminator. There would have only been one Terminator. So I like six. It would have been over. See this? If I can shim that out, that might resolve our problem. See that? How it's free? Shim it right there? What can I shim it with, you suppose? Hmm. I have an idea. Do you remember our extra garbage? Yes. No, seriously, look, what about these? Mm, is that? This is the backing from on the wings. Mm -hmm. We had extras. So a serious law, look. <laughs> that sounds terrible. That's way too much, obviously. But if we could pinch it in just to see if that gap is right. Okay, idea number two. I'm at 5%. Okay. So it'll just turn off. Oh, just when it feels like it? Yeah, I won't get another warning. See, look, see that? Watch this. Oh, that seems better. That's a perfect size. Yeah. So guys, what we'll do is I'll build the other side off camera and just replicate this. I can probably line that up through the hole, but check this out, look. Boom, bam, blammo. Oh yeah! Yes! 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 All right guys, so you get the point. When we come back, this wheel will be back on. Uh, we don't want the camera to die, uh, so we will be right back. We'll get the motor on, get in the radio setup, and finish this thing off.